Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for the Hopkinton Hillers baseball home opener, as today they welcome in the Millis Mohawks. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call, Bob Hamilton on camera, and we are set for first pitch as Brendan Kelly delivers a strike to Jake McKee, the designated hitter. Let's take a look at the Millis lineup. Leading off, batting right now is the DH, Jake McKee. The catcher, John Manning, bats second. The first baseman, Tim Smith, bats third. Kurt Hopkins, the third baseman, bats cleanup as there's strike two. The right fielder, Steven Melia, will bat fifth. Jack Moriarty, the second baseman, bats sixth. Chris Edwards, the center fielder, bats seventh. Bryce Latosik, the shortstop, bats eighth as this one's fouled down the third baseline. Ian Eldridge, the left fielder, bats ninth, and Pat McAvoy is the pitcher for Millis. And we'll take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers field in just a moment as Brendan Kelly is set to deliver the 0-2 pitch. And that one's just outside, one and two. For the Hopkinton Hillers, we'll start off with the outfield. It is Ben McKenzie over in center, Connor Hebert in right field, Ryan Wolf in left, the wind up and the pitch upstairs, two and two. The infield is of course Brendan Kelly on the mound. The catcher, his battery mate is Alex Reynolds. Jake LeBlanc over at first base. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman as there is stri a strikeout for out number one. That'll bring up John Manning, the catcher. Dawson McMillan at second base. Chris Burdick at shortstop. The third baseman is Dylan O'Leary. Designated hitter, Steven Simos. For the Hopkinton Hillers, who are 0-2 on the season, as their strike one to the catcher, John Manning. Hillers 0-2, Millis 0-4. Both teams searching for their first win of the season. Their strike two to Manning. Brennan Kelly set to deal. Wind up and the pitch. That one just outside, one and two. A cloudy afternoon today, but certainly comfortable conditions. Temperatures in the mid 60s, a slight wind blowing to the right as there is strike three. That is two strikeouts now for Brendan Kelly. And we'll bring up Tim Smith, the first baseman. Smith will take a strike. Millis Mohawks led by head coach Keith Vera. The Hillers led by head coach Steven Simos. He's back at the helm for the Hillers after a few years in other places. As the ground out to second, the throw to first, no problem. Tim Smith goes down four to three. On to the bottom of the first we go here at Hopkinton High School. It's Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, the Hopkinton Hillers coming up for their first time this afternoon. And we'll take a look at the Hillers lineup as they get set to face number 13 on the mound for Millis, Pat McAvoy. Let's take a look at the Hillers lineup. Leading things off is the center fielder, Ben McKenzie. Steven Simos is the designated hitter, batting second. Alex Reynolds, the catcher, batting third in the cleanup spot. It's Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, batting fifth. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman, batting sixth. Connor Hebert, the right fielder, batting seventh as there's strike one. Dylan O'Leary, the third baseman, is batting eighth. Ryan Wolf, the left fielder, batting ninth. And of course, Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, Take a look at the Millis field in just a moment. The wind up and the pitch. That one just outside. One and one. Tom, this is a kid you want to keep your eye on all year. He's the only five tool player on the team. That one down low. Two and one. Let's take a look at the Millis field. It is Pat McAvoy who is the pitcher. His battery mate is John Manning behind home plate. Tim Smith over at first base. Is this one on the ground up the middle? Love by the shortstop. No, through the shortstop. And that is going to land McKenzie on first base. Right through the legs of the shortstop it goes. And McKenzie is aboard. He's a threat to steal at any time. 
he'll probably get a good lead. I think Coach Simos wants to be very aggressive on the base paths this year. And Millis has struggled in the field, so I'm sure the Hillers will take advantage of that as there is ball one. Jack Moriarty is the second baseman for Millis. Bryce Latosic is the shortstop at third base. It's Kurt Hopkins. From left to right, it's Ian Eldridge. Chris Edwards and Steven Melia in right field as that one is down low inside. That is going to make it a 2-0 count now. Steven Simos, the DH. Also the son of the head coach. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike there, 2-1. The bench is intently watching the pitcher to see his move, but he's yet to go over. Steven Simos has had eight at bats this season. One for eight at the plate. Checking at first, runner slides back safely. Taking a look at the Millis pitcher, Pat McAvoy. He's had two appearances, a 3.5 ERA. And he has worked through eight innings as there's a strike. Runner takes off from first, and he is safe. There's a steal from McKenzie. And you mentioned that, Larry, the speed of Ben McKenzie, always a threat to steal. Played a lot of basketball this year for the varsity team. And he can run like a deer. That one is up high. Simo steps back in. McAvoy dealing from the stretch. There's a swing strike, and Simos goes down swinging, one away. That'll bring up Alex Reynolds, the catcher. One of the few power hitters on this team. Hits for average, hits for power. Checking on second runner back to the bag. Reynolds two for eight so far on the season. Of course, the Hillers had a delayed start to the season due to all the rain in the first week, or what was supposed to be the first week as their strike one to Reynolds. It's their first game here on the Hillers baseball diamond. And the field conditions looking very good, Larry. Excellent. Beats yesterday's field conditions. There's a strike, 0 and 2. Jake LeBlanc, the cleanup hitter, due up next. Pat McAvoy, multi sport athlete for Millis, stealing from the stretch. That is down the third baseline and foul. I don't think he'll be able to uh, come close to Ryan Sullivan's home run record. I saw. Sullivan hit the facade by the Brown Gym in the air. Must have been 400 feet. But those hitters only come around once in a while. McAvoy steps off the mound briefly. Now back on, dealing from the stretch, awaiting the sign. Runner leading off of second. And this is going to go between the shortstop and third baseman in the left field. The throw in from left field to home plate is just off the mark. And the Hillers will bring in a run. Alex Reynolds takes off for second base as the throw got by the Millis catcher, John Manning. And Hopkinton scores the first run of the game, and they are in business. That was potentially a dangerous situation where the catcher was five feet up the line and straddling it without the ball. So it could have been a nasty collision. Yeah, certainly could have. McKenzie pretty much went right into Manning. And good base running there by McKenzie. Did not hesitate whatsoever. And if he hesitated there, he probably would have been thrown out at the plate. As Jake LeBlanc will step in. Alex Reynolds with an RBI single advances to second on the throw in. Jake, one of the other power hitters on the team. And this is hit in the air to shallow center field. And ranging over to make the catch is the shortstop, Bryce Latosic, for the second out. 
Bryce Latosic, the Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Millis Hopedale Co op program. They took home the Division 4A state title. As Chris Burdick, the shortstop, will step in. Runner leading off of second, and that pitch is going to grab the inside corner. Voted in as captain last year along with Brian Gone and Alex Reynolds. Line up and the pitch. One just inside, one and one. Chris Burdick so far, one for two on the season. Has driven in a run and scored a run. McAvoy set to deal. Oh. That one is going to hit him. Taking one for the team there. Sorry about that. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman, will step in. It's a third generation player. His brother E.G., 2012, third baseman and a catcher. His brother Andrew, a third baseman and a shortstop two years later. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Not quite the baseball family are the McMillans. Father played four years at UConn, and this kid is never afraid to bunt. One of the best bunters on the team, if not the best. That one is just outside, one and one. Both runners taking leads. Runners on first and second, two outs for the Hillers. They have played it a run. As that is hit in the air in foul territory, third base side and out of play. This game had a 1 p.m. start, school vacation week. It's a nice early afternoon baseball. The lineup and the pitch. This is down to third base line. That's going to get through into left field. Runner being waved around third. Here comes Alex Reynolds, and he will score the second Hiller's run. 2 0 Hopkinton. RBI single for Dawson McMillan. That's where Dawson likes to hit him, down the, the opposite way. Burdick up to second. McMillan on first. Connor Hebert, the right fielder, to the plate. Dawson's a very aggressive base runner, but he's got to watch out for a back pick from the first baseman, the catcher. First pitch to Hebert is up high. Well, good start here for the Hillers. They've struggled offensively in their first two games this season, but off to a nice start here in their home opener as there's a swinging strike. Lined up and the pitch. That one just low. Two and one on Hebert. A two sports star. Plays running back and in the backfield on defense. He's got tremendous speed. And he'll likely be the feature running back for Hillers football next season. Is that one up high? One for seven, so one for six at the plate so far on this young season. McAvoy delivers down low. And there's a walk. Bases juiced for the Hillers. And we got the varsity starting goalie, Dylan O'Leary, and speed on the bases. A ball in the gap will score all three. Yep, and he'll be back in that next year for the Hillers as he will step in. Dylan O'Leary, the third baseman today. Lefty awaits the pitch, swinging strike. Both runners leading off of first and second. Bases loaded for the Hillers. That one just outside, one and one. Well, McAvoy. Struggling early on here for Millis. Hillary's with a nice little rally to start things off in the bottom of the first. 
Swinging strike there, one and two. And I think this is going to be a good opportunity for the Hillers to get some of those players in there if things keep going this way that haven't had a lot of experience as of yet. There's a swinging strike, and that is going to be out number three. That'll wrap up the bottom of the first, but not before the Hillers plate two runs. It's 2-0 Hopkinton as we head to the second inning. Top half of the second inning, the Millis Mohawks will come back up to the plate, trailing 2-0 to up for Millis. It's the four, five, and six hitters, Kurt Hopkins, Stephen Melia, and Jack Moriarty. Kurt Hopkins, also a member of that Millis Super Bowl football team. Great running back for the Mohawks. And he awaits the first pitch. And we'll take it up high, 1-0. and oh. Be nice to see how Brendan uh, gets through these hitters after a long sit on the bench. Line up in the pitch, there's a strike. Works very quickly. Fastball slider and occasional change. Trains out of Anderson Baseball Academy out of Holliston. That one inside. Yeah, and he's certainly working through these Millis hitters quick so far. That one outside, three and one. Sophomore awaits the sign and is set to deal. There's a strike, full count. He's been clocked in the high 70s, low 80s. Terrific for a sophomore. As this is on the ground, right side, and it is briefly bobbled but picked up by the first baseman. Good coverage on the bag by Kelly, and they get the out. Good defense there by the Hillers. Score that, a three to one ground out. Steven Mealy, the right fielder, will come up to the plate. Coach Simos does not care for mental mistakes. He'll accept physical mistakes. Yeah, and his coaching style has certainly had a lot of success here over the years at Hopkinton High School. He produced a state champion. I believe in 2005, is that right? I believe so. It was either a state champion or they went very far in the postseason. I know they won the sectional title. Two and oh count on Melia. There's a swinging strike. Now he's back in the groove and working quickly. Yeah, and he's certainly excited to be back as well with the Hillers. That one's hit in the air, third base side, foul territory ranging over and just out of the reach of the third baseman, Dylan O'Leary. Nice effort, though. It's nice to have an experienced catcher like Alex Reynolds behind the plate. We'll be heading off to Babson next fall. I don't think there's a kid that's worked as hard at his craft Really had a great season last year as well. That one outside, three and two. Brendan Kelly, the sophomore pitcher, has only worked an inning so far this season, so getting some good experience in this game. His first start of the year as that one's fouled away. Looks like Alex is calling his own game here. Full count. Yep. There's strike three. Breaking pitch there. Gets Melia and Jack Moriarty will come up. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. One pitch to the second baseman upstairs. They're playing this player 
to pull with Ryan Wolf way off the line in left field. Leg lift and the pitch, swinging strike. Looks like Moriarty was trying to check his swing but couldn't hold up. One, two pitch, fouled away. That one went way back there in the woods. Sun trying to peek out in the outfield, it looks like, as skies open up, and we're starting to see some blue skies now. Wind picked up a little, however. The 2 2 pitch. And this is in fair territory. Got a piece of it. Throw to first, no problem. 1 to 3 goes Moriarty. Another 1 2 3 inning for the Hillers defense. It is 2-0 Hopkinton as we head to the bottom of the second. Ready. Bottom half of the second inning. The Hillers coming back up to the plate. 9-1 and 2 due up. Ryan Wolf, the left fielder, to start things off. Ben McKenzie, the center fielder, followed by Steven Simos, the designated hitter. As Pat McAvoy back out there for another inning of work. Certainly threw a good amount of pitches in the first inning. As there's strike one, hoping for less of a work-filled half inning this time around. That one just upstairs, one and one. Ryan, on, Ryan the singles hitter, go to the right side. Set to deliver, that one tipped foul, one and two. Ryan Wolf, senior, making his second plate appearance in this game. Wind up and the pitch. Down the third base side, and that is a fair ball. Throw to first is going to be in time, but it bounces off the glove of the first baseman. Foul ball. And now they call it foul, late foul call there. One and two. That ball was hugging the line and it just yeah. kicked left the last minute. Yeah, luckily for Millis. That was a good throw though across the diamond by the third baseman, Kurt Hopkins. Can Gotta go for the ball. Can't wait for the umpire. Play it like it's fair. Exactly. That one's foul. Out remains one and two. Good battle here between Ryan Wolf and Pat McAvoy. Seventh pitch of the at bat, and that is foul. That almost took out one of the coaches. That one was a rocket towards the Hillers bench. McAvoy set to deliver. There's strike three, got him looking. Nasty curveball. It's the third strikeout for McAvoy. Ben McKenzie will come up to the plate. Several pitches in that at bat, however. McKenzie hit a single to start things off for the Hillers in the first inning, also stole a base. Take strike one there. Wind up and the pitch. Down the first baseline, foul. 0 oh and two. Boy set to deal. And he got a piece of that one. Count remains 0 2. Wind up and the pitch. 
There's strike three. First two hitters have struck out in this bottom of the second. Steven Simos comes to the plate. He struck out his last time up in the first inning. You don't see that very often from Ben. He, Stevie Simos, and Brendan Kelly play for Nakona in the summertime on the elite team. Ball one to the lefty. Line up and the pitch. Just outside. Simos reaches the catcher. Alex Reynolds due up. One down low, 3 and 0. McAvoy deals. There's a strike. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the right side. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first. Good defensive play there. Simos goes down 4-3. to three, A 1-2-3 bottom of the second. It is 2-0 Hopkinton leading Millis as we head to the third. Top half of the third inning. The Millis Mohawks coming back up to the plate. Due up is the 7, 8, and 9 hitters. Chris Edwards, Bryce Latosic, and Ian Eldridge. The center fielder, shortstop, and left fielder. To face Brendan Kelly, who's back out there for another inning of work. Two, one, two, three innings to start this game off for Kelly. Killers do have warm up action as there's a bunt down the first baseline. Kelly will field it, throw to first, no problem. One pitch, one out. Millis trying a little small ball today against Kelly. Yeah, trying to manufacture a run. They haven't had much success making contact so far. As Latosic awaits the pitch, and he'll make contact up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first. Little high, and it is not going to be pulled down in time by LeBlanc, and the runner will reach. Alex Reynolds showing his hustle, trailing that base runner all the way down the line. And great play by Jake LeBlanc to keep the ball from going out to the fence. Yeah, throw a little high there. But a good save as Ian Eldridge steps in. That, I think you certainly have to score that in error. There's a strike on the bunt attempt. First error of the game for the Hillers. Checking at first, runner nearly picked off, but he's just safe. Brendan's got an excellent move to first base, so I wouldn't venture too far off. Yeah, Latosic did not see that one coming, that's for sure. Reynolds threatening now as that was in there for a strike. Kelly working from the stretch for his first time this afternoon. And there's a strike there. And that is going to be out number two. Jack McKee will come up. He struck out his only time up this game in the first inning. Lead off hitter and the DH for Millis. Line up and the pitch. Checking at first, Reynolds nearly got him. Good throw down the line. No one count on McKee. That's a smart ball play right there. That's why Babson wanted him. Great throw down the line as well. That one upstairs. For those of you just joining us, you're tuned into Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. The home opener for the Hillers of the 2016-2017 school year season. 
Down third base line. It is gloved by the third baseman. Throw to first is a good one. And they got him. Nice defensive play across the diamond goes Dylan O'Leary to LeBlanc. And five to three goes McKee. And despite a runner reaching, no harm done. It is two nothing Hillers as we head to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third inning, the three, four, and five hitters do up for the Hillers. Alex Reynolds, Jake LeBlanc, and Chris Burdick, the catcher, a first baseman, and shortstop. Alex Reynolds hit a single in the first inning. Drove in the first Hillers run of the game as single drove in McKenzie. And he also scored a run himself off a Dawson McMillan RBI single. Wind up and the pitch to the catcher. Breaking pitch will get in there for a strike. Some nice movement on that pitch. Reynolds a 333, two for six coming into this game. Now that average course up. Is that one outside, one and one? I think he was a TVL All-Star last year and certainly this year, he might be the best catcher in all of TVL. This is hit in the air at a play foul towards the track, one and two. Yeah, and he's certainly one of the centerpieces to this Hillers lineup. Line up and the pitch. Got a piece of that one. Staying alive there, one and two. You could have the greatest pitching staff in the world, Tom. But if you don't have a good catcher, uh, it's uh, you're done. Yeah, I agree. Wind up and the pitch. Down third baseline, foul. Yeah, you don't really see teams that have questionable catchers going far in the postseason, that's for sure. Alex is a little upset with himself as that pitch was a hanging curveball. Up and the pitch from McAvoy, that one upstairs. The 2 2 pitch, and this is right up the middle in a left field. It goes as he hits the gap. Reynolds will round first, but stay put. And it's a leadoff single to start the bottom of the third. Jake LeBlanc will come up to the plate, the first baseman. Good piece of hitting there by Reynolds. He's two for two on the day. From the stretch once again is McAvoy. Line up in the pitch. That one got away from Manning behind the plate. A wild pitch and Reynolds will advance to second. That takes away the double play. And Alex is in scoring position now on a hit. Well, do you intentionally walk here? I think he's going to pitch to him. I think so. Blank flew out his last time up in the first. There's a ball. Two zero pitch. That one inside. Looks like McAvoy having a bit of trouble with control. One of the toughest things at the high school level is to hit that curveball. They can hit the fastball all day long. There's a strike there. Up and the pitch. There's a strike. Full count now on LeBlanc. And 
And this is foul down the third base side. JV coach Mark Sanborn had a little dancing down there. Yeah, these coaches staying busy on that third base side. Lineup and the pitch, and that one foul as well. Good battle going on here between the cleanup hitter, Jake LeBlanc, and Pat McAvoy. From the stretch is McAvoy. Runner on second. That one is just outside, and LeBlanc wins the battle as he draws the walk. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, will come up to the plate. He walked his last time up in the first. Two on for the Hillers, no outs. As there's a bunt down the first baseline, both runners advance, throw to first. He's out, but he got the job done. Sacrifice bunt there for Burdick as Reynolds advances to third, LeBlanc up to second. Nice bunt right up the line there, Larry. Steve focuses on the fundamentals, and he doesn't mind a 30-footer anywhere. Dawson McMillan steps in. He had an RBI single in the first inning, which scored Reynolds for the Hillers' second run. And he takes a ball there. Big opportunity for Hopkinton to break this game open a little bit. As the lefty awaits the pitch. Lineup and the pitch is upstairs. Two and oh. Connor Hebert waiting in the wings for his chance. This is the part of the order you want up in this situation. Two on, one out. Both runners in scoring position. McAvoy from the stretch. Hit in the air, foul territory out of play. Dawson has a perfect inside out swing and very often goes to the left field. McAvoy deals. And this is up the first base side, got through the glove of the first baseman. Everybody's going to be safe and a run will score. That is a rough break for Millis. Smith should have had that one. I don't see him do that often, pull the ball. Reynolds scores, LeBlanc up to third. Now you have runners at the corners with one out. Connor Hebert to the plate. And I would venture to say that Dawson McMillan will get the green light. There's a strike, runner taking off from first. It throws high into center field, it goes. And here comes a blank. Four nothing, Hillers. An errant throw allows Hopkinton to plate another run and put McMillan in scoring position. That was a bit of a delay by Dawson McMillan and baited the catcher. And the catcher sailed the ball in the outfield. Well, I see Millis having some defensive problems. Why not try to make them have more, put some pressure on them, and it paid off there. That one inside. Connor hits one in the gap. He can run forever with his speed. That one down low. Connor Hebert walked his last time up, hoping for another one here. Or, of course, a hit. There's a strike. Got him swinging there. The 
Oilers still have warm-up action in their bullpen area. Looks like Zach Sasitsky. There's a strike. Hebert goes down. Two away. I don't think they're in any rush, though, to take out Brennan Kelly. As Dylan O'Leary steps in. As this is hit in the air to right field, that is deep right field, and that is going to be handled by the right fielder for the third out. Stephen Melia making the catch, but really had to fight the sun out there and go to that deep part of the right field, but gets the job done. But the Hillers do plate two more runs. It is 4-0 Hopkinton as we head to the fourth inning. Top half of the fourth inning as Millis will come back up to the plate. Now trailing four to nothing. Due up is the second, third, and fourth hitters, John Manning, Tim Smith, Kurt Hopkins. We have a new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. It is Cole Dragsbeck in there to relieve Brendan Kelly. And one would have to think that maybe they're saving Brendan Kelly for the stretch of games they have coming up. Of course, they have a game scheduled tomorrow, makeup game against Ashland, and then they have a couple games next week as well. Actually, I believe there's three games next week. So they could be saving the, his arm for that stretch of games. That one is outside. Sidearm here. Over the winter, his pitching coach from winning pitchers, John Miller, decided to have him drop down more to make his uh, delivery a little bit more deceptive. He's up the middle, glove by the shortstop. It looks like he had a little bit of trouble getting out of his glove, but will and throw it over to first for the first out of the inning. A six to three ground out for Manning. Tim Smith will step in, and that is a relief shortstop as well. It is Tim Burdick, the brother of Chris Burdick, who was the starting shortstop in this game. We'll try to keep an eye out for any other positional changes they have coming up as that one is inside on Smith. And I think Coach Simo Slarry is going to try to get everybody in there today if he can. Looks like it. He wants to save the arms. It's a long season. Yep. Swinging strike there, one and one. That ball had a lot of drop to it. Can't be fun as a hitter watching him deliver. Yeah, you don't see too many uh, sidearm deliveries nowadays. As that one is just outside. Tim Smith awaits the pitch. As this is hit into right field, that'll drop in for a base hit. That is the first Millis base hit of the game. A single there. He stayed in there and did not bail out. Yeah, good piece of hitting. As he pushes that one into right field, now Kurt Hopkins steps in. One on, one out. There's a strike. Cole was on the 2011 Hopkins and Little League Williamsport team and then moved on to play for Team Massachusetts Baseball as a 12-year-old for many years. And this one is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throws the second for one, the throw to first, and that was a great defensive play, a 4-6-3 double play. will retire the side in the top half of the fourth. To the bottom of the fourth we go. It is 4-0 Hopkinton. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School as we are set for the bottom half of the fourth inning. A 4-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers over the Millis Mohawks. Hopkinton searching for their first win of the young season. 0-2 so far on the year. Millis 0-4. And Ryan Wolf, the ninth hitter in the lineup and left fielder, will start things off. 
Also do up this inning is Ben McKenzie and Steven Simos. Pat McAvoy out there for his fourth inning of work for Millis. That one upstairs. Larry, we saw a nice 4-6-3 double play. We did. And Picture perfect. That is one thing I have noticed so far about this Hillers team. They just seem to keep their cool out there in the field. Well, you can see Coach Simos now coaching still, not only telling them how, but why. And they listen, and he does it with a great bit of humor. One and one pitch here as that one's fouled away. Yeah. Ryan Wolf had an excellent battle with his pitcher in his first at bat. Right, forced McAvoy to throw several pitches, resulted in a strikeout. But it was a great battle. And he will make contact here up to the third baseman, throw to first. Good throw across the diamond. Five to three goes Wolf, one away. Ben McKenzie will come to the plate. And Coach Simos always seems to be talking to one of his players over there on the sidelines at all times, really, just constantly coaching up this team. You're really going to like this kid, McKenzie. All the tools. It's one for two so far today. Hit a single and scored a run in the first, struck out in the second, also has a stolen base and takes ball <coughs> one there. For those of you that tune in all year, when you hear McKenzie's coming to the plate, do not go for popcorn. And this is up the third base side and fouled away. It's a little head on that pitch. And he's trying to take that one to left field. One and one now to the center fielder. That one just upstairs. Ben McKenzie, a sophomore, 571 coming into this game. And he will get a good piece of this one over to right field in foul territory and out of play. Two and two. It looked like it blew around up there a little bit. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he tried to drop a curveball in on him. Ben McKenzie was four for seven coming into this game. Has scored three runs already and driven into. And I was coming into this game. Added another run to his stats in the first inning. It's that one just outside. That'll fill up the count now. He's got to go with fastball here, Tom. And he does. McKenzie ready for it, though. And he'll pop that one in the left field just past the reach of Kurt Hopkins. A one-out single for McKenzie. That'll bring up Simos. Another excellent two-sport star. You covered him playing ice hockey this year when they went on that great run. Yeah, he was one of the key players on that team. 0 for 2 so far in this game. Looking for his first hit. Got a piece of that one, but it's foul. McKenzie took off, but he'll have to go back to first. They may nickname him Greenlight. Steven Simos, a sophomore, expected to do big things throughout the next couple of years for this Hillers baseball and hockey team. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. McKenzie looking at that back foot of the pitcher. If he lifts that front foot, I have a feeling he's going to take off. Yeah, here it is. One stolen base on the afternoon. That one fouled away. 0-2. Just getting a piece of that one. Max 
McAvoy from the stretch. McKenzie leading off of first. Breaking pitch there, got a piece of Simos. That'll put two on for the Hillers with one out. That's the second hit batter. Stevie didn't exactly bail out of the box there. Yeah, taking one for the team. Unfortunately for him, it was a breaking pitch, so not as painful as it could have been. Now the umpire going over to the Hillis coach here. Mike Carter. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Probably asking whether he made the attempt to get out, get away from that pitch. And that's a judgment call. Yep. Well, I think if uh, you turn your back towards it, you're, I guess you made an attempt. McAvoy set the deal. Breaking pitch there just outside of Reynolds. Alex Reynolds having a nice afternoon. Two for two. A pair of singles. He's driven in a run and scored twice. McAvoy deals, check swing, and it's a strike either way. Anything hit in the outfield, there is absolutely no chance of Ben McKenzie getting thrown out. Mark Sanborn will have the windmill going. He's taking a big lead off of second base. Line up and the pitch, and this is foul up the left side, one and two. Due up next is Jake LeBlanc. One out, two on for the Hillers. Already a four nothing lead for Hopkinton. Alex is used to seeing. Checking at second, McKenzie slides back. He was taking a big lead. Alex is used to seeing breaking balls. He and uh, Coach Simos, his oldest son, Timmy, who will be heading off to Army Next year, played at lead level down south, Georgia, Kentucky, all points south. McAvoy set to deliver. McKenzie taking off from second. This popped up into shallow right field, ranging over. Unable to make the catch was Steven Melia. And it is going to load up the bases for the Hillers as McKenzie held up at third. Simos at second, Reynolds over at first. And that'll bring up Jake LeBlanc. Now that is debatable if that was an error because it did land in shallow right field. I'm going to give him the hit for now. What'd you think, Larry? Uh, it didn't touch his glove, so I would give him a base hit. It's kind of hard to read. Yeah, he's playing really deep right field and really had a run in for that one. It was the cleanup hitter now up with bases loaded. Swinging strike there. Jake's been known to hit one out from time to time. He's 0 for 1, did walk in the third and scored a run. And we'll get a good That's piece a of this one into left field, and it is gloved down by the outfielder, but a run will score as McKenzie comes around. Good piece of hitting there, gets the sacrifice, RBI. And it is now five to nothing, Hillers. Simos up to third. Reynolds will stay put at first. Excuse me, Simos actually stayed put at second there. So it's first and second for the Hillers, two outs. And now it is Timmy Burdick. Tim Burdick at the plate, the this shortstop. Of bragging rights at the Burdick home. Well, McAvoy turned around towards second base there to get Simos back to the bag. Good run manufacturing here by this Hillers team. Actually, that is Chris Burdick at the plate as there's a swinging strike there. Chris Burdick must have slid over somewhere else in the field. We'll try to get where he went for you. Swinging strike there, 0 and 2. Throw to second, runner back safely. And it briefly got away from the second baseman, Jack Moriarty, but not far enough for Simos to try to take off. 
he's thrown two straight breaking balls and if it's not broke don't fix it so I think he'll be coming at him with another breaking ball that one inside one and two Shall Chris Burdick reach Dawson McMillan is on deck and we're gonna have a pinch runner here for the Hillers it's going to be Mitchell Karp coming in to pitch pinch run for Steven Simos. That one outside. Line up, and that one is off the batter, and he will take first. Burdick hit by a pitch, second hit batter of the inning for the Hillers. That'll push Carp up to third, who's pinch running for Simos, and Reynolds up to second. We're going to get a discussion on the mound here. I think he's going to take him. He's thrown an awful lot of pitches. I haven't seen any warm-up action for Millis, but sometimes they're deep in that corner, and you can't really get a good look at it, but he is still out there, so... Of course, they could switch one of the positional players to pitcher as well. But for now, McAvoy is going to stay in. And he will face Dawson McMillan, who's having a great day at the plate. Two for two. A pair of singles and a couple RBIs. That one inside. Base is juiced for the Hillers. Two outs. Dawson McMillan with a big opportunity here. Up the middle, glove by McAvoy, throw to first, not a problem. They do get the third out with no further harm done. And we will head to the top of the fifth inning with Tin Hillers leading the Millis Mohawks 5 to nothing on HCAM. Top of the fifth inning, Millis Mohawks coming back up to the plate, due up as the five, six, and seven hitters. Steven Millie, the right fielder, Jack Moriarty, the second baseman, Chris Edwards, the center fielder. As Milio will step in. And it is Chris Burdick back at shortstop for the Hillers. Wind up and the pitch from the side armor is just inside. Got away from Reynolds. 1 0. Tom Leone warming up in the Hillers bullpen area. He'll likely come in if there's any trouble here. Up the right side, and ranging over is the second baseman, who bobbles it, and he will not be able to get it over to first. Amelia is aboard, and that was a tough play for McMillan to make. And I'm going to score that one a single. He had to range over way to his left and play it on the deep infield dirt. Jack Moriarty, the second baseman, will step in. What do you think? Error hit there, Larry. Oh, definitely a hit. He had to go a mile just to get to it and knock it down. He had no chance of getting that runner. But it was a nice job, though, keeping it in the infield, that's for sure. As Moriarty waits his second pitch and got a piece of this one, and it is foul. One and one. Reynolds jumped out of the box and he was going to knock that down and make sure it stayed foul. Yeah, smart catcher for sure. Very high baseball IQ. Set to deliver. That one inside got away, wild pitch, and that's going to allow Amelia to advance to second. Back second pitch that's been off the mark in this half inning. See along the leashes. Wind up 
expand the pitch. That one is outside. That is going to bring the count up to three and one. The release point for Cole Dragsbeck is critical here. If he doesn't release it in the right spot, the ball is going to tail. Runner leading off of second. Lined up and the pitch to Moriarty, and there's a strike. He's going to take off on the strikeout, throw down the first. They got him, and the runner from second will take off, and he will be safe at third. So they get Moriarty on the strikeout. Melia takes off from second and lands at third. Nice piece of base running by Melia. Yeah, certainly was. Good heads up baseball there. I'll bring up Chris Edwards. What do you score that? Stolen base? I haven't seen that situation before. Pretty interesting. That one down low. Invent a new stat, advancement on a strikeout. Leg lift and the pitch down low. So that went 2 3 with the runner advancing. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Got to be tough for the hitters with all those arms and legs coming at them. Sidearm right, he's set to deliver. Fouled away. Now leaving up the count at two and two on the center fielder, who's 0 for 1 today. Bryce Latosic due up next. Line up and the pitch, swinging strike. There's another strikeout for Drake's Beck, his second strikeout of the inning. Bryce Latosic will step in. That probably that ball probably looked in the middle and it ended up on the outside corner. Yeah, he certainly has some good movement on his pitches. That one moved a little too much, ball one. From the stretch is Dragsbeck. That one is hit in the air in foul territory. No, maybe fair. Now foul territory. And Reynolds had a fight off the base runner and still managed to make the catch. Great job by Reynolds. You got Melia coming down the line, but Reynolds keeping his eye on the ball. And he is able to get the third out of the inning. To the bottom of the fifth we go. Hopkinton leading Millis 5 to nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning, a new pitcher for the Millis Mohawks. Ian Eldridge moves over from left field and takes over for Pat McAvoy on the mound. Pat McAvoy is the new left fielder for the Millis Mohawks. Ian Eldridge is a senior for Millis, and this is his first appearance on the mound this season. As stepping in for the Hillers is the seventh hitter in the lineup, right fielder Connor Hebert. 7, 8, and 9 due up. Connor Hebert, Dylan O'Leary, Ryan Wolf. Yes, Connor is due for a hit. That one is in there for a strike. Anything in the gap that's three bases for Connor. I think he and Ben McKenzie had a foot race just for the heck of it, and McKenzie won. Well. He got a good piece of this one over to right field, but ranging under it is Melia, and he will make the catch. One away. Do you think that would have been out with a snow fence? That would have been very close. I, it might have, it, was, it would either be just in front or it would have been gone. But that, he got a great piece of that one. But that is certainly a disadvantage to not having that fence out there. Dylan O'Leary steps in. Lefty third baseman will take ball one. 0 for 2 so far today. 
Nice to hear the news that Brian Gons non-throwing shoulder is healed and he's been cleared to play. I'm sure he'll be getting a start very soon. This one's popped up in the infield. Third baseman range is over. Kurt Hopkins makes the catch. Two away. Now Ryan Wolf will come up to the plate. Eldridge is set to deliver. That one just outside, 1-0. Oh. Leg lift and the pitch. Fouled away past the backstop, 1-1. One the pitch breaking ball inside two and one Mackenzie is uh, on deck like a lion ready to pounce should wolf get on and will he get on in a left field and it's in and out of the glove of Pat McAvoy and wolf will be safe at first that looked like Mac McAvoy should have had it. I'm scoring that one in error. He had to come to a half dive there, but it was right in his glove. We got to catch that one. But the Wolf, Hillers, Hillers will take it. Wolf has good speed, so he may trade. Checking at first, Wolf back safely. To McKenzie at the plate, the leadoff hitter, who's two for three today. So he may trade uh, getting thrown out and have McKenzie lead off the next inning. Well, we'll see. He's going to take off for second, and the throw down is going to not be in time. A stolen base for Wolf. Close call, but he beats it out. Always tough trying to steal on a lefty. And he is taking a big lead off that second base bag. Could he be thinking about third? And this is going to be pushed into right field and dropped down. Wolf is going to be waved around third. The throw home is not going to be in time. And the Hillers are on the board once again. An RBI single for Ben McKenzie. And that is his third base hit of the afternoon. Did I get any bonus points for calling it? I think so. Good piece of hitting there. Pushed it right in the shallow right field. And Wolf, no problem. Coming around from second base. Steven Simos, the designated hitter, now steps in. Carpy. And we actually do have a new hitter up. It is Carpy for the Hillers. Mitchell Carpy. I think McKenzie may be going if he can pick up the pitcher's move. Checking at first, runner back safe. Mitchell Carpy uh, pinch ran in the fourth, now stays in the game for Steven Simos. And are leading off of first, that one up high. He's taken off to second. The throw down is going to get away from the shortstop. A stolen base for McKenzie. That is his second stolen bag of the afternoon. Two outs, one run already in. Now McKenzie in scoring position. Line up and the pitch, that one upstairs. Leading off of second. One two pitch down low. Oh, 
looks like Steve Simos is going to be playing small ball most of the year. Well, nothing wrong with that, especially with the amount of speed you have in this lineup. This is to the third base side, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, not a problem. And Carpy goes down five to three, but not before another Hiller's run scores. It is six nothing Hopkinton leading Millis as we head to the top half of the sixth inning on HCAM. Top half of the sixth inning, the third pitcher of the game for the Hopkinton Hillers is junior Zach Sosicki. Of course, oh, of course uh, very well known from the Hillers basketball team as well. This is his second appearance of the season on the mound. And Larry mentioned he pitched against Medfield and was very effective. Gave up three hits, no runs in that game. And we'll see how he does here against this Millis lineup that has no runs and two hits so far this afternoon. As the Mohawks have the 9-1 and two hitters due up. And they are going to have a different hitter here, it looks like. For is Ian Eldridge. Zach has uh, worked on his curveball in the offseason, his father reports to me. I've known him since he's been six years old and seen him play in over 200 games. He was a strictly a fastball and devastating changeup pitcher. You add in the curveball, and he becomes that, more, that much more dangerous. Zach Costa is the hitter for Millis. Coming in the game for Ian Eldridge. And he'll foul that one towards us. It looks like he's added a few miles an hour on his fastball over the winter. That one coming pretty close to Bob there. We we'll certainly hope that uh, we don't have any injuries towards our uh, great cameraman as that one's fouled away. One and one. Bob's tough though. I think he could take several foul balls. Zach is not afraid to throw back-to-back -back change ups. One one count. Pitch to Costa. That one just outside. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for the Hillers first home game of the season. Bob Hamilton on camera. It's been a fun one so far for the Hopkinton Hillers up six nothing. This one is on the ground, third base side, gloved by the third baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Five to three goes Costa, one away. Nice throw across the diamond there by O'Leary. I'll bring up Jake McKee, the designated hitter, who's 0 for 2 so far today. Sasitsky set to deal. Lefty delivers down the third baseline foul. Sasitsky awaits the sign. Got that breaking pitch by him, but McKee got a piece. It is a strike, 0 and 2. Look for a change up here. John Manning, the catcher, due up next for Millis. Wind up and the pitch. That is hit foul over towards the football field. Count remains 0-2. Hillers do have more warm-up action going on. It appears it's number 11, who's actually not listed on the roster, but we'll do some digging and find out who that is. That one outside, 1-2. One Two pitch to McKee. That one is in the dirt. Two and two. Then 
Jones has certainly stayed busy behind the plate today. Zach looked like he held on the ball a little bit too long, but he's been in many battles. Lefty deals, and this is up the middle on the ground, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, not a problem. Two away. John Manning will step in now. Manning 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Willis down to their final four outs, trailing 6 0. There's strike one. Hopkinton trying to lock up their first win of the season. 0-2 so far to start. A couple of tough road losses. Big opportunity here, though. Swinging strike there. I think Steve's philosophy is to work quick. Drake's back, Kelly, and now Zach Sosicki. Getting the ball, foot on the rubber, and throw. And there's strike three, a one, two, three, top half of the sixth. To the bottom of the sixth we go, the Hopkinton Hillers leading Millis, six to nothing on HCAM. Bottom of the sixth inning, two up for the Hopkinton Hillers are the three, four, and five hitters, Alex Reynolds, Jake LeBlanc, and Tim Burdick. Alex Reynolds stepping in now. He's having a great day so far. Three for three overall, all singles. Also has driven in a run and scored two runs. And I think, Larry, he's an early candidate for player of the game. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you. For any kids that are watching and want to see a really good, fundamentally sound catcher, this is the guy to watch. Eldridge deals. That one is hit foul. High fly ball to the right side. Onto the track it goes. 0 oh and 1. He wears the tools of ignorance well. Eldridge awaits the sign. Leg lift and the pitch. That one inside, 1 and 1. That one is just high, two and one. Alex wasn't gonna bite on that one. Yeah, good eye there. Eldridge delivers, just outside. Counted in his favor. He'll be hacking if it's anything close. Lefty set to deal. And there's ball four. Reynolds has reached first base and all four at bats today. That'll bring up Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman. He's having a pretty good day, sacrifice RBI. He's walked and scored a run and he's flown out. Leg lift and the pitch, in the dirt it goes. Covered up by Manning. Alex read that perfectly. Looked at the down angle, but he had no chance to go, and he's not uh, hes not the base stealing type. Chris Burdick in the on-deck circle. You don't have to be a speedster as long as you can read that ball on coming on down. Blank steps back in. Line up and the pitch. 
And this is popped up above the head of the second baseman and down it goes into his glove, one away. Runner stays at first and now Chris Burdick will come to the plate. Was he put in the uh, order for young Stevie Simos? Uh, Chris Burdick in his usual spot as he'll take a strike. And I think they just uh, switched him back in there. Runner leading off of first. They lift in the pitch. Down low it is. One and one. Eldridge checks in at first, runner slides back safe. As I understand it, Coach Simos wants to be the wants them to be so aggressive that they're taking even a four shuffle steps off the bag for some of the faster runners. Eldridge delivers, good piece of this one into right center and that is going to drop in for a base hit. Reynolds around second, heading to third. He will be stopped at third and it's a stand up double for Chris Burdick. Drove that one deep, and Larry, uh, we were talking about the fence set they sometimes have in right field, and if that fence was out there, that one would have been gone. No doubt about that. Maybe they should just leave the fence down. I think they should. If you're, a, if you're an outfielder and you're running towards that fence, it could be a little bit distracting, especially when you hit it. Dawson McMillan steps in. He's having a good day, two for three at the plate, a couple RBIs as well. Takes that one high. One out for the Hillers, two on. Runners in scoring position. Trying to add a little security here to their six nothing lead. That one down low, two and oh. They usually put up that outfield fence after the uh, marathon because they need the space. They do have this new net up along the first base side. First time in a couple years they've put this up. That one is low, 3-0. And they did that to avoid foul balls reaching the track area because there was quite a few of them the last couple of seasons. Eldridge set to deliver. There's a strike. Three and one. Dawson was taken all the way on that pitch. That one's low and McMillan draws the walk, bases loaded. Second walk of the inning for Eldridge. I'll bring up Connor Hebert and Coach Simos going to have a word with Hebert. We're gonna talk some strategy I think here. That's happening. The Millis catcher, John Manning, with some words of encouragement for his pitcher, Ian Eldridge. No warm up action for Millis. Hebert is 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Takes that one outside. set to deliver. Is that Tommy Leone down in the it's bullpen inside. warming up? Yeah, I believe it is, yep. Actually, he's, number 11's unlisted. That's uh, one player I've been trying to figure out. Discussion on the mound now is the Millis coach. Mike Carter will head out there. Tommy Leone's number 15, number 11 unlisted. 
might be a call up from the JV squad, perhaps. We'll have to get uh, the identification of that player from Coach Simos. The only one I could think of would be uh, Barker Hook from uh, Junior Varsity. Or it could have been a number change as well. Eldridge set to deliver. Hit in the air, high fly ball to center field. The outfielder is under it, will make the catch. The runner is going to tag from third. Reynolds comes around and scores. That is the seventh Hiller's run of the afternoon as Connor Hebert gets the job done with the sacrifice RBI fly out to center field. And that'll make it two outs. Runners on first and second. Chris Burdick stays put. Dawson McMillan stays put at first. And Dylan O'Leary steps into the batter's box. 7-0 Hillers now. Falls that one away. 0-1. It's a good rip at that one. Dylan O'Leary 0 for 3, searching for his first hit today. The only hit Hiller in the batting order, not to reach base yet. He's got a lefty-lefty matchup here. Down low. One and one. Both runners leading off of first and second. Eldridge delivers. There's a strike. One and two. Dylan's got a nice Typical lefty uppercut swing. Leg lift and the pitch fouled away. Cow remains one and two. Is he featuring mostly fastballs, this pitcher here, this lefty? Yeah, it's been mostly fastballs. It's mixed in a couple of different breaking pitches. There's a fastball there, that one outside. Seems like whenever he gets in trouble, he results to the fastball. Stays away from the breaking pitches. Both runners continuing to lead. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three. And that will wrap up the bottom half of the six, but the Hillers do plate an insurance run. It is seven to nothing as we head to the top of the seventh. Tough half of the seventh inning. Millis coming up to the plate, down to their final three outs. Three, four, and five hitters do up. Tim Smith, Kurt Hopkins, and Steven Melia. And we have a new pitcher in there for the Hopkinton Hillers. It is Tim Burdick taking over on the mound, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Hillers. And Zach Sasitsky had a pretty nice outing. Pitched a couple innings. And came in in relief. The Hillers, the Hillers like have had uh, held this team to one hit, true? A couple hits, and uh, it looks like they're really uh, yeah, two hits for Millis, one in the fourth and one in the fifth. That oh. was fouled away. That's not a good thing with Alex Reynolds. They do not have a backup catcher. Young Stevie Simos has an injury to his throwing arm, so one ball hitting his thumb or a foul tip to the meat hand, and that could spell trouble. That one is fouled away. Is it playable? No. 0 oh 2. Yeah, Hillers have used four pitchers in this game. Of course, the starter was Brennan Kelly. Then you saw Cole Dragsbeck come in for a couple of innings. Zach Sasitsky then followed him, and now you have Tim Burdick in there. The 0-2 pitch, fouled away. That was a nice breaking pitch by Timmy. Burdick set to deliver. 
On the ground up the middle, no play for the pitcher. Glove by the second baseman, throw to first, and it's not in time. Close call there, but that was a nice job by McMillan saving that one from getting into center field. Smith aboard with a leadoff single. That'll bring up Kurt Hopkins. I didn't think he would make that close at all, but he does have excellent range, just like his brothers. Right, very similar to Andrew McMillan at that second base position. Good range, a lot of speed. You wonder if uh, Dawson McMillan will follow in the footsteps of his brothers and play some Milford Legion baseball. That one's inside. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I know his father. He'll pick, probably take a, a flyer with Coach DeVita. I'm sure he will. Leg lift and the pitch. That one in there for a strike, one and one. Burdick delivers, fastball just high. Maybe I had to take a course in genetics at the high school. Only seven to 10 percent of people are left-handed, but the McMillan brothers all throw right and bat left. Leg lift and the pitch, down low. That's always pretty interesting to me. You bat left, throw right. You don't see that every day. Three one pitch to Hopkins. Upstairs, he'll draw the walk. Two on, no outs now for Millis. Steven Melia coming to the plate. The lefty, the right fielder. Went for two on the day, had a single in the fifth and stole a bag. And Millis might have something going here. Swinging strike. Good speed on that one. Burdick working from the stretch, peeks over at first, set to deal. Third base side glove by the third baseman. Steps on the third base bag for one. Throws the first, got away from the first base bag. Both runners are going to advance. And the runner at third will stay put. So Smith advances on the errant throw to third. Hopkins up to second. Or excuse me, Smith was cut off at third. Hopkins up to third. And the hitter, Steven Melia, up to second. You could tell Coach Simos has been drilling him up pretty good. Reynolds did not leave an abandoned home plate to trail the runner, and Timmy Burdick was backing up home plate. Pitch to Jack Moriarty is a swinging strike. So he did get the one out, though. Yeah, the defensive strategy for Hopkinton has been outstanding in this game. And they've ran into a lot of different situations. As this one's popped up, shallow left center, ranging over to make the catch is the shortstop. And that is the second out. Runners stay put. Chris Burdick getting the job done there. That's brotherly love there, Tom. Yeah, getting his brothers back there. One out away for the Hillers to claim their first victory of the season. And improve to one and two. Two on, two outs. Leg lift and the pitch outside. Burdick set to deliver. Waits the sign, leg left and the pitch. Hit in the air to right field. It is in fair territory. It will drop, one run is in. 
And now two runs are in, and legging out the triple is Chris Edwards, a two RBI triple, and Millis has some life. That one went to deep right field and just stayed in the field to play. Steven Melia and Kurt Hopkins come around. And it is just like that, a five run game, seven to two. That was a tough ch chance for Connor, a right handed hitter. That ball hit down the line, it's going to tail away from him. Still two outs. However, as Bryce Latosic steps in, so Millis really needs a rally here if they want any chance. That one upstairs, 1-0. Oh. It's Tim Burdick's first appearance on the mound. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike. One pitch, swinging strike there. Millis down to the final strike. One and two on Latasic. Leg left and the pitch. Hit in the air towards right field. It is a foul ball and out of play. Count remains one and two. Timmy wants to end it right here. Wind up and the pitch. There it is, strike three. And the Hopkinton Hillers win their home opener and their first game of the 2016-2017 season by a final score of seven to two. A job well done by the Hillers this afternoon. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll come back and wrap this game up as the Hopkinton Hillers take down Millis 7 to 2. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School. The Hopkinton Hillers baseball team wins their home opener by a final score of 7 to 2 over the Millis Mohawks. A great effort by the Hillers. They used four different pitchers, but all of them pitched very well and they get the job done. No runs given up until the top half of the seventh, but a great all-around effort by the Hillers as they take down Millis seven to two. The total amount of hits for Hopkinton was nine, Millis had four, and both teams had two errors. The Hillers struck in the bottom of the first for two runs to make it two to nothing. Alex Reynolds had an RBI single to drive in Ben McKenzie. Dawson McMillan also with an RBI single. Hillers added two more in the third inning as Alex Reynolds started off the inning with a single. Jake LeBlanc then walked and then a sacrifice to push both runners up by Chris Burdick and then an RBI single by Dawson McMillan would help the Hillers have a 4-0 lead after the third inning. And then they would add another run in the fourth, a sacrifice RBI by Jake LeBlanc, and another run for the Hillers in the fifth as well. Ben McKenzie with an RBI single to drive in Ryan Wolf, and then an insurance run in the bottom half of the sixth, a sacrifice flyout RBI by Connor Hebert would make it seven to nothing. Miller struck for two runs in the top half of the seventh, but by then it was too late. Your player of the game for this afternoon is Alex Reynolds, the Hillers catcher. He went three for three, scored three runs, and had an RBI and a couple of nice plays defensively behind the plate. Alex Reynolds with a great game for Hopkinton, player recognition. Ben McKenzie also had a great day as well, three for four at the plate. He scored two runs and had an RBI. And of course, the uh, Hillers starter, Brennan Kelly had a nice day as well. He went three shutout innings against the Millis Mohawks as they captured their first win of the young season. Hopkinton now one and two on the year. Millis falls to 0 and five. A great way to start off the home games here this afternoon 
for the Hopkinton Hillers as they take down the Millis Mohawks by a final score of 7-2. to two. And hopefully there'll be a whole lot more winning on the way for this Hillers team that certainly has a good amount of talent, a lot of young players that are certainly going to have to develop as the season goes on, but definitely a lot of potential for the Hopkinton Hillers and their new head coach, Steven Simos, who of course has been with the Hillers uh, for many years in the past, but he is back and this is his first season of this stretch. And so far off to a nice start for this Hillers team. Well, for Bob Hamilton on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this HCAM production of Hopkinton Hillers baseball. The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers take down the Millis Mohawks 7-2. to Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. This has been a presentation of HCAM. Take care, everyone.